Good afternoon. I now call to order the meeting of the Building and Contracts Committee for Tuesday, May 4th, 2021. In accordance with the Board of Education's resolution approved at the March 10th, 2020 board meeting in the event of a medical or health emergency related to COVID-19, the board chair in consultation with the vice chair and the superintendent may declare that a board meeting or board committee meeting be held remotely in its entirety without the physical presence of board members, subject to the establishment of a mechanism that would allow each board member the opportunity to fully participate in the meeting despite not being physically present, and that would allow the public to also remotely attend those portions of the meeting that are open pursuant to the Maryland Open Meetings Act. By being able to listen and or review those portions of the meeting, as a result, today's meeting is being held virtually and broadcast. In order to conduct this meeting efficiently, all voting items this afternoon will be done by a roll call vote. Board committee members will say their names before making and seconding a motion, as well as when requesting discussion on an agenda item. Ms. Slate, please call the roll call to determine the presence of a quorum of the committee. Ms. Jose, Present. Mr. McMillian. Present. Ms. Hen. Mr. Kuhn. Mr. Offerman. Present. Thank you, Ms. Slate. Please call the role of staff members participating in today's meeting. Dr. Boswell McComas. Present. Ms. Logman. Present. Mr. Dickerson. Here. Ms. Howie. Ms. Rumpar Sangaroon. Present. Ms. Thank you. Ms. Lowry. Present. Dr. Scriven. Present. Dr. Wheatley Phillip. <coughs> Dr. Zarchin. Present. Ms. Byers. Here. Dr. Jones. Dr. Roberts. Ms. Burnop. Present. Mr. Corns. Present. Mr. Dixit. Present. Ms. Lewis. Present. Dr. Nieves. Present. Mr. Patillo. Present. Dr. Parandozzi. Present. Mr. Saris. Ms. Shea. Present. Mr. Plate. Ms. Levenstein. Present. If there are additional staff participating that were not mentioned, please state your name. This is Melissa Wisted. Thank you. And this is George Saris. My microphone was off when you called my name. Thank you, George. Anyone else? Thank you all. Thank you, Ms. Slade, um, and welcome everybody. Uh, Mr. Saris, please state your name for the record and proceed. With uh, this is George Saris, Executive Director of Fiscal Services, and the first item we have this afternoon is JBO 710-21, Temporary Adult Assistance and Therapeutic Behavioral Aids. This is a new competitive bid contract for temporary adult assistance and therapeutic behavioral aids for the Department of Special Education. Approval is requested for a five-year contract with 10 recommended bidders and contract spending authority of one point one five million dollars. Committee members, any questions? Please Ms. state Jones, your name and question. I'm Go ahead, Mr. McMillian. Ms. Jones, this is Rod McMillian. I have a question. 
is, are we doing this via contract because we we're having difficulty hiring these people to fill these positions ourselves? Therefore, we have to go to an outside contractor to to search for employees. We have um, many employees that fill these roles that we hire directly, but I believe this contract primarily addresses uh, positions that require higher levels of training or certification. And we have uh, consistently obtained a portion of, of these uh, in staff through external sources. So, hold on a second. Something's going on here with my, I don't know what's going on. Uh, so, Mr. George, do the, like the IAs and the different people that we have, do they go through professional training to, with the opportunity of securing these positions? If there are more certification, more requirements, there might be a higher pay jobs too. Um, I have to defer to Ms. Lowry or someone from Human Resources on that uh, question. Sure, George, um, for these positions, typically in the schoolhouse through the IEP process, um, part of that discussion at team is identifying that a student has a level of need that requires someone um, that has had um, a higher level of training, um, particularly um, therapeutic um, training related to some of those behaviors that they would need to manage and assist with with that particular student. So um, we then look to the Office um, of Special Education to assist. Um, they, they work with these agencies to identify the people that have had the appropriate background and training to match up with a particular student's needs. Thank you very much. Uh -huh. And Mr. McMillian, we have over 1,200 that we hired directly ourselves in addition to these positions. Thank you. This is Mr. Offerman. Uh, two general areas of questioning. Uh, one, if we're hiring these people on, in terms of a, uh, on a uh, temporary basis, then their work with us would typically be terminated at the time that the student either didn't need those, uh, didn't, know, didn't need that specialized help or, uh, or uh, perhaps uh, graduated or, 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 uh, or uh, left the system. Is that, is that correct? That is accurate. Okay, fine. Typically, other... um, Mr. Offerman, sure. um, what happens too is when a student, for example, graduates, um, we we try to then match that employee up with a new student the fo for the following year. So, um, you know, when when we have a, an employee that has met with success with our students, we certainly wish to continue with them. Okay. Uh, my second question is: These people are coming up. Uh, they are obviously a number of recommended agencies. Right now, this, is the employee working directly for us, or is the or is the employee working working for the uh, for the uh, for the provider? For the provider. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very mm -hmm. much. That's all. Any more questions, board members? Hearing none, uh, Mr. Sarris, please yes. proceed with the next contract. The next uh, contract, CWA 131-20, technical support to implement a community schools strategy. This contract modification will provide for the continued technical support to implement a community schools strategy for the Department of Social Emotional Support. Approval is requested to increase contract spending authority by $2,481,083, bringing the revised contract spending authority 
to $4,081,083 with one awarded vendor approved by the board in August 2020. And I'll just add for background that uh, originally three proposals were received for this uh, contract in 2020. And from those three, the current provider, the YMCA of Central Maryland was selected. And uh, because additional grant funding has become available through the Maryland blueprint legislation that was just passed, we have asked to increase uh, the spending authority in the event that uh, BCPS is not able to retain uh, or to recruit and hire all the positions that are authorized under this program. So our preference is to uh, fill these positions uh, through the Department of Human Resources, but to also use the Y as needed to, uh, to provide services uh, in the interim or in the meantime. Thank you, Mr. Serres. Uh, committee members, any questions? This is Mr. Offerman. Uh, uh, it seems like a very, a very large, a large, uh, a large increase to me. One and two. I'd like to hear uh, of an example or two about uh, about this program specifically, how how it actually works. I think Dr. Nieves or Ms. Ferguson would be the best position to answer that question. Sure, thank you, um, Mr. Offerman, for your question. And and so uh, the way that uh, the community schools program works is that uh, we are looking through this programming and the funding that was provided to us uh, by the Maryland legislature to address uh, the needs of the whole child. Um, and so through that, uh, we have hired uh, community school liaisons or identified that we would have community school liaisons at uh, 21 of our schools that have been uh, designated to receive funding. And, um, and in addition to those uh, community school liaisons, we've also been able to increase the um, um, the level of health services that are provided. So in the case of our schools, we know that every school has a school nurse assigned. Um, and so we've uh, boosted uh, the health supports by adding health, uh, health liaisons to uh, work with the school nurses at those schools. But what the work entails, um, it's, uh, a broad range of responsibilities. It includes uh, engaging and supporting families um, in the schools, securing and maintaining community partnerships, integrating el eligible services into the school community, and then working with students and families to ensure that they take advantage uh, or, or participate um, in the offerings provided. Each school is uh, required as part of the funding to also um, come up with a, to conduct a needs assessment. And so the level of work at each school will depend on the particular community that it's uh, serving. But these are liaisons and uh, the, will work with the staff, the students, the families, um, and uh, community organizations to look at the school environment and ensure that we are creating safe and supportive uh, and welcoming environments to our students and families. And that really looks at, at the needs of, of those individual communities and draws upon the community resources with the ultimate goal of enhancing uh, the teaching and learning process. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Mr. McMillian, do you have any questions? No, thank you. 
Uh, so, Dr. Nieves, I do have a question. Um, this was a pre-approved contract and it went up to uh, $2.4 million. I think Mrs. Sarah said some of it is covered by grants. And my second question is when you say each school conducts its own assessment, it's conducted by the principal, the teachers, or in conjunction with the nurse. Um, if you could clarify that a little bit clearer as to um, how those resources are allocated. Sure, thank you, Ms. Jones, for your question. So uh, first of all, the funding, uh, when we originally came to the Board of Education, uh, back when the contract was uh, first approved, uh, we only were serving four schools. Uh, um, for next school year, the number of schools identified by MSDE has grown to 21 schools. So we are bringing a greater 17 additional schools into the fold. And, um, and so the Y of Central Maryland will provide professional development, consultation, help the schools with their community needs assessment, assist BCPS with developing a community-wide strategy. So all those pieces uh, account for uh, the additional funding. Plus, um, in the case that internally, we are not able to identify enough uh, folks who can do the work of community liaison, uh, they will serve, they being the Y of Central Maryland, will serve as a backup um, and provide uh, any staff that we may need uh, to ensure that we are carrying out the programs in our schools. But the first intention is to draw from in-house resources first. Um, to your question about the the needs assessment, uh, the why works with the community uh, school uh, liaison for that particular school, um, engaging leadership and members of the community to assess uh, what the needs are at each school. And then that um, information is then used by the school to drive professional learning, uh, to uh, purchase materials, um, supplies, resources uh, that, the, that the school identifies through um, its needs assessment process. Thank you, Dr. Nieves. And another re real quick question. It's $2.54 million spread over four years. The original contract was approved last year. And does this $2.4 million cover the entire four years or is there going to be more grant money coming in? Um, this is George. This is George Sarah. So let me provide some background here that may help. The initial grant was about just under a million dollars. And uh, as the the uh, list of eligible schools was expanded from four to 10. That gets us to the roughly 2.5 million grant for FY21. For FY22, the grant goes to 5.2 million to accommodate the additional 11 schools. So the, the grant was structured to give about $400,000 to each school and it is expected to be, uh, it's a key element of the Kerwin slash Blueprint for Maryland program. So this is a sizable program that will be ongoing. And as MSDE adjusts the eligible poverty rate for schools to be included, that uh, the number of schools could grow uh, subject to the funding that the state makes available. So this is entirely funded uh, and intentionally funded by the state for this purpose. Thank you, Mr. Saris. Um, committee members, any questions? Hearing none, we will proceed to contract number three. Mr. Saris, please proceed. Thank you. Uh, the next exhibit, ASI 813-21, 
musical instrument rental and repair services. This is a new competitively bid contract to provide musical instrument rental and repair services to various schools. Approval is requested for a five year contract with two recommended bidders and contract spending authority of $625,000. Committee members, any questions? Uh, yes, and this may be slightly off topic, but I was wondering how this year's uh, education because of the virus and, uh, and, and virtual instruction, how has this impacted uh, the money that, that, that we needed to spend, uh, uh, money that we needed to spend this year? Thank you, uh, Mr. Offerman. I think you'll see that this year's expenditures of 389,000 have exceeded uh, prior years, and that is because additional uh, hygiene measures were taken due to the pandemic, um, as well as it gave us an opportunity to, uh, because the the instruments were not, uh, there were many more instruments in need of repair from prior years. So all of that work was done this year, but we uh, do expect that to moderate uh, closer to prior year's averages uh, over the term of this contract. Thank you. Mr. McMillian? No, thank you. Um, I have a quick question in terms of the musical instruments how because I know kids still buy instruments what does this cover in terms of uh, how are these instruments allocated across our schools based well, on need or we own over 16,000 instruments and um, this program also provides the option for parents to rent their own instruments from these providers at these prices that we've uh, been award that we've awarded. Um, I think someone from Ms. Shea or Ms. Cohn's team would be able to answer the specific allocation of the instruments we own. Sure thing. Thank you, Mr. Saris. Um, good afternoon. Um, we do exactly as you described. We um, twofold the allocation of those 16,000 instruments is across the schools. Um, we ensure that each school has some inventory um, for the purposes of, like, for example, an elementary school exploratory music. We have a certain inventory that we make sure every elementary school has so students have that opportunity. But then we also allocate it by need. So our team works really closely with the music department in each school to try to ensure that. Um, we have some BCPS owned instruments that we can loan to students who um, need that support financially. And then um, the other piece of this particular contract that supports the families, as Mr. Saris talked about, in addition to making sure we have that fair price, um, families who are renting an instrument who need that rented instrument repaired, they will pick up and deliver that instrument from the school. So. I rent an instrument for my son who's in eighth grade. If it breaks, I can take it myself to the repair shop or I can just send it into the school and the school will handle that through this contract where they will send out my rented instrument for repair. I still pay for the repairs, but they handle the service um, of that delivery back and forth and will also help me um, get a loaner in the interim. So it provides that additional service to support families, even those that rent outside individually. Thank you, Ms. Shane. I think I have done the same thing as you. Does this also cover the elementary school children that get their recorders and they keep that? You know, they don't uh, return. So the purchase of instruments is actually a different contract. This particular contract is for repairs and then the service of that rental. We actually have a different contract. You may remember we were here in the fall and we generously were approved for a contract for using the operating funds to purchase instruments. All right. Thank you, Ms. Shea. Um, any more questions, committee members? Uh, Ms. Jones, I have a question for Ms. Shea. Please. Ms. Shea, I've had the good fortune of listening to the Stemmers Run Steel Band on several occasions mm -hmm. back in the day when we could, when we could interact. Uh, it's coming again. 
It's not going to be the old normal. It's going to be a new normal. Okay. But does, the next one. does a contract like this help the stemmers run kids with those steel drums? So if um, this particular contract is just for the repair of the BCPS owned instruments. So Mr. Sarris talked about we have our own inventory of 16, 000, over 16,000 instruments. This contract that we're talking about today is for the repair of the BCPS owned instruments and then that service. So if a student at Stemmers were renting through one of these vendors a steel drum of their own, then yes, that service that I described about helping with repairs or helping to ensure that price would support that but the actual purchase of instruments is a different contract with many Thank more awarded bidders. Thank you. Sure. And I look forward to this steel drum music too. Thank you. Um, hearing no more questions, Mr. Saris, please proceed to the next contract. Thank you. The next item, JBO 705-21, Security Officer Services. This is a new competitively bid contract for security officer services for schools. Approval is requested for a five year contract with four recommended bidders and contract spending authority of $830,000. Committee members, any questions? Mr. Hoffman here, yes. Uh, I am interested if and when we also involve uh, Baltimore County Police Department. Uh, uh, if that's something that we do and uh, and and what are the parameters of that? Can anyone help us with that? Well, I, uh, I would think perhaps Miss Lewis would be best to respond to that question. I know. Uh, we reach out to them as necessary, uh, but I don't believe there are regular arrangements established. Yes, good afternoon and thank you, Mr. Sarris. And so we do not use our uh, police partners for our general um, scheduled security for our athletic events. However, we do notify them. We share the schedule of our athletic events. And so if we need additional support, they are aware of the activities that are taking place in a school. And so with our security, um, personnel that are hired through the contract, they are trained to reach out to Baltimore County um, Police if they need assistance. Um, there was a past practice and it occurs occasionally where if a school has more than one school resource officer, they might with permission from the precinct flex their schedule so that the school resource officer might be available for the athletic event. But by doing that, it means that they're taking the school resource officer away from the day program and that kind of support. I mean, people like to have people who know the students, but we really can't have it both ways, have them present during the school day and then have them present for the after school events. Also, often um, the individuals who are hired um, through these contracts are police officers. Um, retired or current police officers, and so some of them would have a relationship with the students. Yeah, I did like, first of all, having coached a number of years in Baltimore County and had a lot of athletic events even when I, when I, when I wasn't coaching, um, I'm happy to see that, you know, this is a this is a part and it obviously has been a part in the past, but I've uh, been in a lot of situations where, where I was glad that there were security officers there uh, also because I, I think sometimes when there's not a lot of security support that that it uh, that it falls on teachers who have to be their chaperoning and puts them in in situations where they probably shouldn't be in. So uh, I really support this contract and this and this uh, and this whole concept. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, um, you. Thank you, Miss Lewis, Mr. Offerman. Any more questions? Mr. McMillian? Well, I could second what Mr. Offerman said about having security on site. I mean, there's nothing quite like it really because I've, I've literally chaperoned a lot, a lot of events and a lot of them without security and a lot with security. And it's a real, 
it's a real comforting you know experience to know that security is there and security has your back or you have their back or whatever uh because some of those situations can get very very emotional and very hostile so i'm with i'm just thankful that they're there i really am so thanks mr offerman for bringing that up and get me to think about it thank you thank you mr mcmillian um there being no further questions we will proceed to the next contract mr Sarris, please proceed thank you the next item cwa 112-21 Fresh Bread. This is a new competitively bid contract to provide fresh bread to various schools, for the Office of Food and Nutrition Services within the Department of Business Services Operations. Approval is requested for a five-year contract with one recommended bidder and contract spending authority of $2.6 million. Committee members, any questions? Hearing none, I do want to state for the record that another committee member had a lot of questions which was answered by staff in our weekly update and it will be uploaded later um, in the evening during the board meeting um, to board docs. So a lot of those comprehensive questions have been answered and I appreciate that. So thank you staff for doing that. Uh, there being no further questions, we'll proceed to contract number six. Mr. Sarris, please proceed. Thank you. This is our last item, ASI 812-21, Fresh Produce. This is a new competitively bid contract to provide fresh produce to various schools, the Office of Food and Nutrition Services within the Department of Business Services Operations. Approval is requested for a five-year, one-month contract with one recommended bidder and contract spending authority of $5.5 million. Thank you, Mr. Sarris. Committee members, any questions? Uh, I have a question for Ms. Levenstein. Ms. Levenstein, yes. at one time, I don't know, six or eight, 10 years ago, did the local farmers have the option or opportunity to bid on providing, you know, uh, vegetables to the local schools. Is that accurate? Well, many years ago, our lead agency, uh, Maryland State Department of Education, encouraged uh, a farm to school program that was sponsored by USDA and um, asked us to reach out to the various uh, local vendors that may be able to service us. So we did at one time. Uh, reach out and we would not contract with them directly. We would want them to go through the approved process, which would be our uh, the various vegetable produce companies out of Jessup, Maryland. Um, the problem with just buying off the road or a roadside or just an independent farmer is we specify certain sizes and counts in our boxes of fruit. And if we do not receive all of those, uh, it's a quality assurance issue, then we could be uh, shorthanded or short the, the number of uh, pieces, if you will, of apples or plums, peaches, whatever the case may be. So we go through a, this competitive process and seek out vendors that actually can provide institutional delivery of those items. And that's what we did in this case and an award was granted. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Mr. Mr. Alfman, do you have any questions? No, not to, no, thank no. Thank you. So, Ms. Levenstein, um, I have a quick question in terms of the farm to uh, table produce that we have a lot of community supported agriculture in, in Maryland. Is there a way for us to even do a small contractual um, contract with local produce or farmers to get that fresh local produce without a huge uh, carbon footprint getting transported by USDA? Is that program no longer supported by USDA? Yes, when we uh, reach out to our vendor to buy local, we request local as much as possible and definitely USA 
uh, by America is also in that uh, language. And uh, they seek out what they consider local would be Maryland, Pennsylvania, Delaware, Virginia, and we would uh, source those items based on our menu needs. So many times we we have limited menu choices and the growing season for those items are is also limited. So when it, when in season and local, we definitely ask our lead um, vendor to do that on our behalf. So they would source it for us and subsequently deliver it then to our schools. All right, thank you. You're welcome. There being no further questions, I will now entertain a motion to recommend that items one through six be moved to the full board for approval. So moved, Offerman. Thank you, Mr. Offerman. The question is on the recommended approval of contracts one through six for board action. Uh, is there a second? Yes, I second it, Rod McMillian. Thank you, Mr. McMillian. Um, those in favor, please say aye. Those opposed, please say no. Ms. Slade, please call the roll call. I'm going to repeat the names of those in case others have joined. Ms. Hen. Mr. Kuhn. Mr. McMillian. Yes. Mr. Offerman. Aye. <laughs> Jones. Aye. There being three in the affirmative, the motion passes. Contracts one through six will be moved forward to the full board. Is there any further business? Because there is no further business, this meeting is adjourned. Thank you very much. Thank you, board members. Thank you, staff. Thank, Thank you. you.